Welcome to NASM CPT exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Flexibility and resistance training for pregnant women in which position should be avoided after what point in pregnancy? A. Prone, as soon as the client knows she is pregnant. B. Prone, after 6 weeks. C. Supin, after the first trimester. D. Supin, after the second trimester. The answer is C. Supin, after the first trimester. Explanation. Because of the risk of orthostatic hypotension due to the possible obstruction of venous return in the supine position, pregnant women should avoid resistance and flexibility training in this position after the first trimester. The prone position is safe for pregnant women up until and after six weeks. Number 2. A client who suffers from a hernia may be further injured by any activity that increases pressure in the abdominal cavity. Which breathing technique should never be used with one of these clients? A. Timed breathing. B. Valsalva maneuver. C. Pranayama. D. Yogic. The answer is B. Valsalva maneuver. Explanation. The Valsalva maneuver is performed by trying to forcefully push inhaled air out through a closed mouth and obstructed nasal passage. It is essentially the bearing down of one's breath, such as techniques used to pop a person's ears during an airplane descent, and it works by decreasing the preload pressure to the heart. As a result, however, it increases pressure in the abdominal cavity, which can further injure a client suffering from a hernia. Times breathing is a typical strategy used in exercise and is safe for all individuals. Pranayama and yogic breathing are the same technique, both used in yoga as slow, controlled inhalations and exhalations. Number 3. During the initial consultation with a new client, she informs you that her main goal will be training for a marathon. As a fitness professional, you design a program that progresses in stages that mimic the physical demands of a marathon. The specific exercises you chose to train her with will stimulate the adaptations she will need to complete a marathon. Which principle of specificity should you use to design this client's program? A. Prioritization. B. Resistance training. C. Cardiovascular prioritization. D. Specific adaptations to impose demands. SAID. The answer is D. Specific adaptations to impose demands. SAID. Explanation. Set is a common specificity principle that calls for programming that causes adaptations within the body that will be specific to the demands of the goal. Prioritization is often used opposite a competitive season schedule and trains one aspect of muscular fitness at a time, and resistance training refers to a combination of consecutive training sessions. Cardiovascular prioritization is not a specificity principle. Number 4. You are working with a new client. She is inexperienced with resistance training and considered a beginner-level client. You decide to implement a single-set system in her training program. For this method, your client will perform how many repetitions of each exercise and with what frequency? A. 3 to 6 repetitions one time each week. B. 6 to 8 repetitions three times each week. C. 8 to 12 repetitions two times each week. D. Repetitions until failure two times each week. The answer is C. 8 to 12 repetitions two times each week. Explanation. The single set system is a beneficial method for training beginning level clients. This system dictates that each exercise is performed for a single set consisting of 8 to 12 repetitions, two times each week. Number 5. Which resistance training system typically includes 1 to 3 sets of 8 to 15 repetitions, with 15 to 60 seconds of rest between exercises? A. Vertical loading. B. The pyramid system. C. The multiple set system. D. Compound sets. The answer is A. Vertical loading. Explanation. Vertical loading, also known as the circuit training system, consists of a series of exercises performed one right after the other, with minimal rest between them. The typical circuit consists of 1 to 3 sets of 8 to 15 repetitions. Number 6. 
At the close of your initial conversation with a new client, he tells you that he feels he is ready to change his unhealthy behaviors and wants your help. What type of communication did you most likely use to help him achieve that emotional state? A. Verbal. B. Kinesthetic. C. Touch. D. Visual. The answer is B. Kinesthetic. Explanation. Kinesthetic communication refers to how the communicator makes the listener feel. Effective motivation uses kinesthetic communication to help the person receiving the information achieve the optimal emotional state for behavior change. Verbal and visual are forms of communication, but do not help achieve an emotional connection as well as kinesthetic. Touch is a type of nonverbal communication. Number 7. Which of the following is the ability of the neuromuscular system to allow motor unit recruitment and synchronization within a single muscle? A. Intramuscular coordination. B. Intramuscular coordination. C. Speed strength. D. Reactive strength. The answer is A. Intramuscular coordination. Explanation. Intramuscular coordination is the neuromuscular system's ability to allow the optimum motor recruitment and synchronization levels within a single muscle. Conversely, intramuscular coordination is the same ability, but through all muscles working together. Speed, strength, or power is the ability of the body to produce the greatest possible force in the shortest possible time. Reactive strength, or elastic strength, is the ability to efficiently switch between force reduction and force production. Number 8. Which resistance training progression technique utilizes the microcycle as the timing basis for intervals and intensity? A. Reverse linear programming. B. Nonlinear periodized programs. C. Linear periodization programming. D. Progressive overload. The answer is C. Linear periodization programming. Explanation. The linear periodization is a classic method that uses a 1 to 4 week microcycle to time an increase in intensity and volume. A reverse linear program is beneficial to clients looking to achieve muscular endurance, but it follows the linear periodization in reverse order. A nonlinear program deviates from the classic periodization and usually uses a 12 week mesocycle. Progressive overload refers only to the increase in weight during resistance training. Number 9. Your 16-year-old female client is experiencing energy imbalances, menstrual disturbances, and a decreased bone mineral density. What disorder is she likely suffering from? A. Anorexia nervosa. B. Bulimia nervosa. C. Binge eating disorder. D. Female athlete triad. The answer is D. Female athlete triad. Explanation. Female athlete triad is characterized by a decrease in bone mineral density with or without osteoporosis, energy imbalances, with or without eating disorders, and menstrual disturbances. Number 10. Which of the following is not true in terms of flexibility? A. Clients must practice maximum flexibility to reduce the chance of injury. B. Exercise sessions should be preceded by a dedicated warm-up, regardless of time constraints. C. A client who has been diagnosed with hyperlaxity should not be encouraged to stretch to the joint's full possible range of motion, ROM. D. Flexibility is joint-specific, allowing for movement beyond ROM in some joints and a below-average range in others. The answer is A. Clients must practice maximum flexibility to reduce the chance of injury. Explanation. A common misconception about flexibility is that clients must reach extreme levels for the practice to be effective in reducing injury. In fact, flexibility is unique to everyone and is simply the free movement of a joint through its normal range of motion for that person, whatever that may be. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.